Hey everybody, this is Andrew from Faithful Remnant Radio and Fearless Philosopher. And uh, this video that we're gonna do today is gonna be on the Book of Enoch and uh, just how um, some of the deceptions around it are affecting the uh, followers of Christ and the Christian community. Um, we've also got Fearless on the Hangout as well. How's it going, Fearless? Not too bad. Hey guys. Right on. Awesome. Cool. So uh, we don't have a ton of time, so I guess we're just going to kind of dive right into things. But um, just first off, you know, I just want to go into like, why does it matter? You know, why is it important to discern, you know, what's a satanic deception, what's not, and what's the truth? Um, you know, because there's a, a mindset I see a lot in the Christian community where people don't want to divide the, the brotherhood and they don't want to divide the followers of Christ. And um, you know, they don't want to bring negativity and, you know, negative thoughts into things, you know, and that's really not what anybody's trying to do by um, just kind of exposing some of these truths about, um, you know, the deceptions that are out there. Um, but let's just kind of see what the Bible has to say on some false doctrines, just so we can kind of get an idea of why this is important and why as Christians we're truly called to um, discern and follow the truth. So um, from Romans 16, now I urge you, brethren, keep your eye on those who cause dissensions and hindrances contrary to the teaching which you have learned, and turn away from them. For such men are slaves, not of our Lord Christ, but of their own appetites. And by their smooth and flattering speech, they deceive the hearts of the unsuspecting. Um, and again, in Second Peter 2, we see, but there were false prophets also among the people even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves a swift destruction. Okay, so clearly we can obviously see that, you know, the word of God, scripture is clearly telling us that, um, you know, we need to be aware of these heresies, we need to be able to discern um, between the truths, and the lies and uh you know not fall for smooth and flattering speech uh and let that deceive us um any thoughts on that fearless no it sounds good to me yeah those are good uh scriptures right there um there's another one uh that's really applicable to this uh that brings uh people heaping in the last days who will uh heap to themselves their e their itching ears uh false teachers and uh, with all these uh, people pushing the book of Enoch, I find it, it, it fits that description perfectly because it's something that is really exciting and interesting mm -hmm. um, um, that isn't just in, in line with uh, the actual core canon. And people are sort of looking after something new, something exciting, something that is, was supposedly hidden, something supposedly occultic. Right. So they have these itching ears, and so it's, it's satisfying that itch. But then they're, they're just going to be, their ears are just going to be itching more and more uh, and they're going to be constantly uh, seeking uh, more and more, um, you know, sort of hidden, hidden secrets, so-called hidden secrets, which, which are really just the depths of Satan, ultimately. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, and there is something that's really exciting about the Book of Enoch in theory. Like, it's really crazy to think about, you know, huge 400 giants that were walking around. and <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, you know, almost this is like, you know, it, it almost it's it's like a fantasy book or something and it's it's like this yeah. exciting and interesting fantasy sci-fi novel that's really cool and biblical you know too supposedly and um, that's what, what, these, what these guys who are these um you know we can just call them false teachers if we want but uh not only do they appear to have this agenda to actually deceive people but they also always seem to be wanting to sell their books sell their merchandise yeah. and uh, the book of enoch is a really good way to do that you write about this uh, supposedly lost book um uncovering these secrets to people these people are always on all these radio shows uh tv shows their youtube channel uh, selling their books and and the book of enoch right. is a great sell yeah right and that's the crazy thing actually that's a great point is that these guys um you know like rob skiba la marzulli uh faces like the sun um, these guys, like all they do, it seems like is talk about the book of Enoch. They have s several, you know, books and, you know, the 
video after video after video on it. And uh, I see people that even get introduced to the Christian community and might actually, you know, discover these conspiracies and discover these deceptions and, and understand that, that Christ is the way. Um, but they get stuck in the same thing. They get stuck in this like uh, loop of being obsessed with learning about the, the Nephilim and, you know, hybrids and hybrid this and hybrid that and constantly hybrids all the time, um, you know, where they're spending more time like mentally masturbating about the book of Enoch and the theories within it, then they are actually looking at the truth within scriptures. And, um, you know, if you really look at the truth within scriptures, you know, a lot of the, the, the arguments, um, you know, for the, the hybrid theories and the Genesis six experiment and, you know, the fallen angels mating with women, those all really fall apart when you look at scripture itself. Um, they can only really have any, legitimate ground to stand on if you're using exclusively the book of enoch and elaborating on it within your own writings as well so yeah there's definitely some people trying to cash out on the book of enoch thing for sure um, and even either way i think it's just this entertaining thing that a lot of people can get stuck in that has them you know just not satisfied with the actual true word of god and they need scripture to be this exciting you know fantasy novel um, instead of just following the words of of our lord yeah, exactly. Like the canon is not written just to be some kind of entertaining uh, story. It's always every, every single line is carefully chosen to be fruitful for instruction, exactly. to uh, teach us about our place uh, in this world, um, yes. what we're supposed to do. Um, and the book of Enoch is clearly written to uh, give you all these in enticing uh, secrets to make you go down these uh, interesting, dark, occultic paths to learn the secrets of, of all, supposed secrets of all these uh, angels and how they work. If God mm -hmm. wanted people to be, uh, uh, to know that much about the angels, he would have um, described them in as much detail in the, you know, 66 canonized books of the Bible. Um, yeah. And the, the, the main, the main problem with the book of Enoch too. And so obviously it's a ver it's a really sophisticated, a uh, well orchestrated, you know, hoax or uh, heretical forgery uh, mm -hmm. here, which is what people don't understand. They often think, oh, but it, you know, uh, it says this, and then scripture seems to say that, and that lines up, they line up with each other. So, uh, it, you know, it must be canonized. It must be the word of God. But the problem is that, you know, in, in Genesis 6, 2 and, and 6, 4, you know, when, when you, you see the phrase sons of God, there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bear children to them. The same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. So, you know, people say, okay, uh, who are the sons of God? Let's try to figure it out. It's backwards to go to some, you know, mysterious, supposedly hidden book and uh, see its account of what happened and then think, oh, that must be the actual truth of the matter. If you did right. that all throughout scripture, when you, uh, you know, there's all, all kinds of ridiculous Gnostic books about, uh, what happened in the Garden of uh, Eden, you know, the, the Gospel of Mary. I don't know, you have ridiculous ones. You know, Satan through his earthly minions writes all these ridiculous books to try to wedge them into the canon. Mm -hmm. It's been going on since the Word of God has been written. And that's completely backwards. You have to use Scripture alone if you're trying to figure out, um, you know, what a phrase means. So, totally, yeah. You're literally going outside of Scripture to learn about scripture and uh taking this extra biblical text and having it almost holding it up as equal to or greater than the actual bible itself while while using uh crafty double speak to pretend that you're not you know you it's like rob, rob skiba one sentence he's saying enoch isn't quite scripture and then the next paragraph it demonstrates that he's trying to hold it up the same exactly. standards as scripture trying to use it to actually override scripture uh, because um, it is it gets the final say on what happened uh, in Genesis six. Now the problem yeah. too, what I see most, one of the most common things I see uh, people do when trying to push the Book of Enoch is they say the sons of God must be angels. When there's not even one instance in uh, the King James version where the phrase "sons of God" is used to describe angels, but people just take it for granted that, say, in uh, Job one six and Job two one sons of God is referring to angels when there's no evidence whatsoever to suggest that. Mm. Jo Job 1, six reads, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. There's plenty of instances, people presenting themselves before the Lord when we know it's on earth, that that's where it's taking place, 
And there's yeah. even instances where Satan is actually right beside them. We know, uh, you know, we're, we're told plainly what the sons of God are. Mm-hmm. Romans 8, 14, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Talking about, you know, earthly people, human beings who are uh, redeemed in Christ. For the mm-hmm. earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Romans eight nineteen. You know, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. What verse is that? That's uh, 1 John 3, 1. Uh, uh, I mean, I could just read all of these. 1 John 3, 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when we shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Uh, I guess I missed this one. So John 1, 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So the sons of God is something that human beings who are redeemed in Christ become, so they can be referred to as sons of God when they are those who are, you know, either waiting on the Messiah, if it was in the Old Testament, uh, or looking back on what he did for us, in the case of us, or those who are in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Uh, Now, another example people use is Job 38, 7. It says, when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. And they just take for granted that that's in, in heaven, uh, when actually, if you look at the full context, because they make it sound like, oh, well, this is like in the very, this is in the v- very beginning of creation. But it says, uh, so Job 38, 6, whereupon are the foundations that are fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? We know the cornerstone is Christ. So when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. So this is one of the examples that they try to use. But in this instance, this is talking about those who are redeemed in christ uh you know at the very end from our perspective but god has an eternal perspective he's seeing those who are saved already this is talking about christ uh you know the lamb slain from the foundation of the world uh so when you're taking these you know more profound uh passages like this you can't just take for granted that uh sons of god are referring to angels there's no totally there, there's no example in scripture where we're told that sons of God refers to angels or that any an angel was ever actually called son by God. And in fact, Hebrews 1 clearly to me says that at no time did God ever call an angel son and uh, Christ was made so much higher than the angels and we shall be like him according to uh what was it first john 3 2 i believe that i quoted at his coming which means which suggests that we shall be higher than angels Mm -hmm. so it's uh, you know hebrews 1 1 through 14 disproves uh the book of enoch to my satisfaction uh should i just read the whole thing or which one is it Uh, what's the Uh, verse hebrews 1 uh 1 through 14 because this is i think this deals a deadly blow to the book of enoch yeah let's definitely go through it okay so god who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. This is a rhetorical question, saying, He never said that to any angel. Mm-hmm. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, And let all the angels of God worship him. See, whenever angels are being referred to, it just uses the word angel. God is not the author of confusion. If he wanted to express to us the fact that angels came down to earth and mated with uh, human women and gave birth to half demon, half human hybrids, he would have said so in no uncertain terms. Why does it not read that whatsoever? Yeah, like you literally could not, you could not get that, 
the sons of God are fallen angels uh, that, you know, created Definitely not. hybrids. You could not get that possibly if you just looked at scripture alone, which means that ultimately for people that do believe that and are preaching that doctrine, there's an issue of trusting the teachings of men over the, te- the word of God. You know, exactly. God and people really wanted us to know that information, then why is the book of Enoch not in his Bible? And why is that information about angels actually being the son of God and actually mating with women and creating these hybrids? Why is that not in there as well? Um, and the book of Enoch puts uh, Jesus at the level of angels when he's so much higher than the angels and, they, and angels actually worship him. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, you know, the, the main thing too is that in Genesis 6, uh, God clearly says it was the wickedness of man yeah, that absolutely. provoked the Lord to wrath and brought about the flood. People like Rob Skiba, you know, the persona he plays, uh, yeah. has, this, has this problem with, uh, you know, how could God destroy the whole world? Uh, I can't think of anything. Like, there's no way that people are, could have been that wicked. Uh, it must be some outside force that is responsible. It must have been, you know, these uh, fallen angel entities who corrupted yeah. us genetically and gave birth, produced these monstrosities, these genetic monstrosities, and that's what explains it. But it doesn't say that. It says the wickedness of man. It never mentions these monstrosities. It never mentions these hybrids. It only mentions, uh, you know, it says the wickedness of man, the violence of man that was in the earth. Mm-hmm. You know, and people say, well, how could, you know, the, every single thought in man's heart be only evil continually? Uh, he had to have been, uh, you know, genetically altered as such that that was the case. But people who say that must not understand just how straight and narrow the path is. Mm-hmm. Because right now, from the perspective of God, maybe we can't see it with our finite minds. But, you know, the more we uh, walk the straight and narrow path and uh, the more we develop uh, eyes to see and ears to hear, we can tell that every thought of almost everyone on earth right now is evil because Mm -hmm. they're not worshiping the true creator. So even when they have these, you know, seemingly benevolent thoughts, well, it's always tainted with their godlessness, with selfish motives, Yeah, you know, who are the sons of God. Those who who, uh, inherit salvation um, are rendered the sons of God, not the angels. So you you clearly get the the clear distinction between angels, the sons of God, and the son of God there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff there, like... um, to uh to to dive into um because yeah i mean rob skiba for example to to bring him up again like yeah it's um you know his reasoning behind god flooding the world he he can't wrap his head around that god would murder people you know because he can't imagine i I, i'm i'm imagining that this is his mindset but because he can't imagine that you know everybody could possibly be wicked on the whole world and that god would need to just start fresh and again that's just you know it's pretty clear um, what God Himself says, and if you just look um, at Genesis six, yeah, you know, you see God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and He saw that every imagination of the thoughts of His heart was only evil continually. You know, now that doesn't mean that somebody's going around thinking about how they want to murder babies all day, but it means that they're pursuing their own selfish lusts rather than following the straight and narrow path and you know humbling themselves before God. They're they're just following the lusts of the flesh and following whatever makes them feel good, um, you know, which isn't of God. If it's not of God, then it's of the devil. Yeah, exactly. Uh, therefore, just, it's just, evil. just imagine everyone on earth not worshiping God, not paying attention to Him. And that that's already exactly what's happening right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't mean that every single one. Yeah, is just you know when Jesus says, this is another thing that all these people bring up. These Book of Enoch pushers, they always say, you know. As the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Mm-hmm. And they say, oh, that means that there were all these uh, genetic uh, uh, experiments going on between fallen right. angels and humans and all this, you know, just a- a- absolutely absurd levels of um, uh, violence and all this. But actually, Jesus explains what he means by that because he says, you know, as they, w- they were uh, eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. That's what mm-hmm. he said. That's the... The analogy is basically they were kind of going about their day, not paying attention to uh, Noah warning them and mm-hmm. listening to God, basically. Well, mm-hmm. the flood, they didn't care. They weren't expecting. They weren't watchful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it, doesn't, it doesn't necessarily specify that at all. Yeah. 
Totally, totally. And it's downplaying the severity of sin. It's saying that God won't kill, you know, God, God doesn't care about sin. It's okay. Like, that's not really what bothers him. It's this, it's, you know, Satan mating with, you know, the, the women and creating these hybrids and these demons. And he's messing up God's master plan because, you know, um, he's going to taint the, the seed and potentially taint, you know, Jesus because Jesus would be born. And that's why God had to wipe everyone else because, um, you know, if Jesus was born of a hybrid, it would have screwed everything up. And it's just, you know, it's just a bunch of garbage. I mean, it's just de- literally just downplaying the severity of sin. The reason that God wiped out the earth is because of sin. It's that straightforward. And, um, you know, anything else might sound good. It might feel good. It might f- feel better to think that God only wiped it out, the world out because there was hybrids, but that's just simply not true. And if you actually look at what the word of God says, what God, you know, put in his book, um, you know, that you can't, you can't take away that you can't take away hybrids from that. Um, so, Definitely can, uh, um, yeah. And also on the topic of, um, like these angels as well, um, you know, en- Enoch has some pretty interesting stuff to stay- to say about them. Um, and I think Enoch within its own words really reveals that it is not a writing of God, that it is a contradiction to scripture. It is, uh, it is of the devil. Ultimately, if you look here in Enoch chapter 40, the second, uh, is who presides over every suffering and every affliction of the sons of men, the holy Raphael. The third who presides over all that is powerful is Gabriel. And the fourth who presides over repentance and the hope of those who will inherit eternal life is Phanuel. Th- th- <laughs> these are four angels of the Most High God and their, and their four voices, um, which at that time I heard. So uh, I don't see anything in the Bible anywhere about Phanuel being our way into eternal life. In fact, we're taught explicitly in the Bible that there is only one mediator between God and man in First Timothy, um, and that is exactly. Christ Jesus, right? So right there alone, you're looking at a book that's outside of Scripture. It's not in the canonized Bible. It's not the Word of God, and it's telling us something contradictory in terms of how you can actually inherit eternal life. Apparently, you just have to go through this guy, Phanuel. Um, now, if you can find anything in Bible to support that, I'd be thrilled to take a look at it. But um, yeah, and that, and that Timothy quote's great at uh, refuting both the Book of Enoch and Catholicism, also, where you have to go through this. We know yeah, yeah, Catholicism is yeah. an excellent example totally. of Satanism masquerading as Christianity, totally. and how this uh, Enochism, this new religion, is also another uh, form of Satanism masquerading as Christianity. In Catholicism, you have to get through this long laundry list of uh, extra biblical saints of yep. falsely deified Mary. Yeah. Uh, also your, your priest. Uh, all, yeah. All these clear of the clergy <laughs> who you call father when Jesus said, call no man on earth, your father. Yeah. Uh, and then the Pope who's like basically supposedly Christ on earth or something ridiculous. Uh, you know, by the time, and then eventually maybe you get to Christ, but of course you're not going to because Christ isn't going to let he, he's right there with, for you all the time you can get you can uh, get you know right right to him at any moment but if you're going through all of them you're just gonna end up contacting a demon basically <laughs> yeah i mean yeah that's christ cares about having a relationship with you and knowing you directly um you know explicitly in his and Pope Francis even recently said not to have a personal relationship with christ he, he said it was dangerous i believe yeah, yeah dangerous yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so, um you know which again is just that's just some guy some pope um whatever he believes over the actual preserved word of god um itself so there has to be a standard for the word of god it has to either be reliable and true and it has to be consistent I mean, or none of it really can be trusted, in my opinion. If, if there's anything in the Bible that contradicts itself or is disproven or can't be preserved or, you know, is wrong or the, the, God forgot to put the book of Enoch in, and, you know, that's why he had, to, he had to have it found with the Dead Sea Scrolls. You know, if you can't believe that the Bible is perfect in its own, then I don't see how you could believe anything from the Bible because how do you know what's true and what's not? Or how do you know which parts, you know, are, are accurate that you should believe and the other parts, which Jesus wasn't really serious about, um, you know, so, um, exactly. uh, an- another huge issue actually using scripture alone, uh, that refutes the book of Enoch is also, there's this issue, all these book of Enoch pushers, they just presuppose that the Genesis three fifteen um, uh, seed, uh, verse, the verse about, uh, you know, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise the head and thou shalt bruise the seal. 
they automatically presuppose that that is uh, a, a genetic seed that is being referred to. Mm -hmm. And so they think, okay, how are we going to explain that there's this uh, genetic line of ha ha like half Satan, half human hybrids uh, versus uh, just the, the pure, genetically pure race? And, oh. and, and so ge ge uh, Genesis 6 supposedly explains that uh, where fallen angels uh come down and actually you know these fleshly angels actually copulate with human women and then give birth to these hybrids but that's a an assumption and a false one of that because we can look through scripture and see that seed is uh actually clearly referring to uh purely uh the spiritual not something physiological or genetic so so peter first uh first peter 123 you know being born again not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So, you know, if anything, if you want to try to really, um, you know, literalize the seed and make it something, you know, as, as tangible as you can and think about what exactly the seed is, if anything, it's going to be the word of God is the seed that makes you uh, born again mm -hmm. uh, uh, into a child of God. And, you know, the word of Satan is, is Satan's seed. Because it was, you know, it's like what the serpent said to Eve um, is what got her to sin. Um, all these people who are in this world who are uh, worshiping Satan, whether wittingly or no, are basically following Satan's word rather than God's word. You know, and being born again, it's all these verses talking about how uh, Christ's seed actually has to abide within you. This is something spiritual. You know, God would not allow irredeemable uh half demon half human hybrids to just be born who are just irredeemably evil just purely evil and have no uh chance of redemption or no um free will at all it just it, it's that, right and they keep breeding as well and they keep yeah. making more of them it, it just doesn't it's just i mean there's no reason for us to think that yeah there's no yeah. reason for us to believe that it's just it's just that idea is incommensurate with scripture there's no idea we're ever given of that scripture always talks about you know preaching the gospel to everyone cain in the garden of eden he's told that he has if he does well he will be accepted you know and he's said to be of that wicked one but if you look at that whole um he's said to be of that wicked one but we know what uh children of the devil are and children of god we know it, it's a pure it's a purely spiritual thing mm -hmm. uh, where where is it i don't know if i can follow. oh yeah in this first uh, john three ten. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. And you, if you look up, up the full context of these verses, you can see that it's clearly uh, referring to a spiritual thing. You know, First John 3, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him. See, you have that. This is clearly referring to spiritual seed, being born again, being born of him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. In this, the therefore, a son of God, if you will. Yeah. yeah. In this, the not miss out. Yeah, exactly. In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. So, you know, and it says, for this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. You know, it doesn't say... And, and wherefore slew him? Why did he? Why did he kill him? Uh, oh, because, because he was a, he was a demon half hybrid. demon, <laughs> half demon, <laughs> half human hybrid, and he couldn't help it. He was born irredeemably evil, and he can't be saved anyway. 
Yeah. So it doesn't say that. So I think that's really clear um, that it's a spiritual thing. So you look at the scripture alone, compare verses with verses within the King James Version, within the 66 canonized books, all you want, and you will never get these half demon, half human hybrids. Uh, you have to go outside of it to these heretical forgeries um, that are supposedly the hidden uh, words of God. Uh, a lot of these people pushing the Book of Enoch are also pushing all kinds of ridiculous books as well. Yeah, pushing a uh, uh, book of uh, Jasher, which also we have no way of verifying that it's the one that is being referred to in the Bible. And then yeah. Jubilees. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, and, and people also reference, um, they'll say like, well, the Bible talks about the book of Enoch. And, um, you know, that's, oh, yeah. that's like the best that. that's case scenario. That's a, that's a half truth. Um, I mean, it really doesn't ever talk about the book of Enoch. In, never Jude, book. in 1 Jude 14, it says, and Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, uh, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So it references Enoch. Enoch was a, a guy, definitely. Um, but it doesn't say anything about the book of Enoch. It doesn't say, read the book of Enoch. It's, it's scripture. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't say anything about that. It says he prophesied. And even uh, if it did say the book of Enoch, how would we know that the book that we have now is the book of is Enoch? Is the book of Enoch, exactly. But worse than that, it doesn't even mention the book. So we don't even know if it's a book, if Enoch wrote any books. Mm -hmm. We don't even know if it's a book that he's uh, referencing. It could be that he's uh, referencing a, an orally transmitted uh, prophecy of Enoch's that was well known. Or it could be that the Holy Spirit um, gave Jude uh, the knowledge of what his uh, prophecy was automatically. We know that the Word of God just records... 100% accuracy, the deeds and words of men, uh, or it could be re referencing a, a, a book that has that prophecy preserved in it, which isn't the book of Enoch, which also the book of Enoch uh, stole from. So we, the, this this book of Enoch that we have now, we have no, no way of knowing whether it is merely, it, it merely stole that quote, that prophecy from a separate book that Jude is also quoting, or if it's also using that um, orally transmitted uh, prophecy of yeah. uh of uh, Enoch's, or if it's if it was written after Jude wrote that, and it takes it from Jude, and we're being lied to when we're told that it uh, precedes uh, Jude. I mean, if you trust the supposed carbon dating method that was used to tell us that the Book of Enoch uh, dates to um, three BC, why don't you believe in evolution? Why don't you believe um, that your grandpa was a rock? Uh, yeah, they, they they use the same method to tell us all kinds of ridiculous things why would you believe that at all we don't even we can't even verify we don't even know if they're if they even you know use their fake unreliable method to even determine that in the first place or if they just conjured up that lie because yeah. the person who conjured up that lie could very well just be a well we know as a matter of fact this is the kind of control that satan has over the world it would have been a, a jesuit some type of jesuit agent what is happening now with this deception of the book of enoch is you have christians who believe in jesus christ but they're holding the book of Enoch as equal to scripture. They're holding these teachings that are, as far as I'm concerned, handwritten by Satan and may as well have been. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's not of God, so it can only be then of the and, devil. And, and, you know, and they're holding this in the same, the same light and the same level of reverence as they're holding the Bible, if not holding it to a higher, a higher level of um, you know, worth. Exactly. And, Hand in hand with that is that if you think that these hybrids you know came then that means that basically satan's a, satan's angels you know came down and they're a manifestation of satan and they're able to mate with people and then so satan's actually be able to be the father of humanity in a sense um same deception yeah. with the serpent seed doctrine that you know um cain was actually uh was actually j the son of satan it's just the same the same trick and the same lie that say you know satan actually is yeah and what, what we should mention too is a lot of uh these uh, book of enoch pushers uh say well you know a, a high occultist believe that uh cain is literally the son of satan or uh, they believe in, that the fallen angels uh came down and mated with uh human beings and uh they can reference people like all the way back to as as far back as you want to go really yeah.
You know, and seeing what so, people believed a long time ago about something in scripture is completely irrelevant, no matter how, uh, you know, whether they're a, a church father or a so-called authority, like people have been deceived as far back as you can go and yeah. believe all kinds of ridiculous things. The, the church fathers cannot be trusted at all. Some are going to be better than others. Some will have, you know, almost all truth to what they're uh, saying or have a lot of good things to say, surely. But um they are not uh, the word of god they're fallible men and then uh, some of them are going to be outright uh ridiculous heretics believing yeah. uh, falsehoods as well satan crept into the church right away obviously so um it's not a sur it's not a surprise if uh you have these you know so-called uh traditionally authoritative writers uh believing all these ridiculous unbiblical things uh that can't you what you have to do is go to the word of god itself and see if you can establish uh, the position you're defending using the Bible itself, using the 66 uh, canonized books um, alone um, without uh, recourse to these extra biblical books. Because uh, all the time you look at these people uh, trying to sell the Book of Enoch, the Genesis 6 genetic experiment lie, they're always um, referencing all these uh, extra biblical sources. Not only extra biblical books, mm -hmm. but just what random people who aren't even believers like uh, mm -hmm. josephus okay maybe josephus is a you know relatively impressive jewish historian he's not even uh, uh he wasn't even uh, an actual true believer a true uh uh christian mm -hmm. uh, you know the, these kinds of people we we have no means of verifying even um who is um who was saved and who wasn't necessarily but um why take someone who's writing who's you know whose writings aren't in the canonized word of God, and then you're uh, trying to establish a conclusion on the basis of what that person believed. So exactly. Completely exactly. irrelevant. I think, uh, I think we've done a good job at uh, not completely destroying the Book of Enoch, which I think we've done, uh, <laughs> giving a good introduction to uh, many more uh, points we could bring up in the future. But um, Yeah. Absolutely. And, yeah, and we definitely encourage people to, to look into this more on their own. And, you know, there's, we could go, we could literally keep talking for hours yeah, and hours honestly, and try yeah, to continue well, my, covering my, this stuff. But. That's advice for someone, to, honestly, is to not just believe what these teachers are telling you. Actually look at the Book of Enoch. The Book of Enoch Something's reads up. more like the Quran or some, you know, one of the yeah, books of demonic yeah. origin, not of divine origin. You can tell it's stylistically completely different, uh, completely different in terms of content uh describes things completely different it takes you on this you know occultic uh like out of body type experience uh introduces all these angels with all these uh strange uh names um, that we've never heard of in, anywhere in the bible it, it, it refers to satans in plural uh it tells you like the head of the angels is it, like we know it's satan and then who are we have this like azazel and like uh sam Yazel or whatever all these different all these ridiculous <laughs> names fanuel uh who presides over repentance like where is this coming from this is all completely ridiculous yeah exactly you can either trust something entirely being yeah. the bible and the words of god or you really can't trust something in its entirety um you know which means that you have to question every single teaching of it and uh yeah demons will definitely sprinkle in little pieces of truth and then they'll they'll sprinkle in other false doctrines and, and things to uh to lead people away so again we need to look at the, the the words of god that are consistently true every single word every single letter you know has a specific purpose in the in in scripture yeah so i think that's a good place to leave it off but um yeah. god bless each and every one of you and uh and all your families and may peace be with all of you in the name of the lord jesus christ all right. Yeah, sounds good. Signing off. See you guys awesome. later. Amen. Take care, guys.